The proportion of locally produced food that's consumed by Singaporeans has fallen, except for eggs. While local farms boosted their yields slightly, there's still work ahead for Singapore to produce 30% of its nutritional needs locally by 2030. Let's take a closer look at the numbers. First up, eggs. According to the Singapore Food Agency's latest report, production volume rose by 13% last year, and this accounts for more than one-third of the country's needs. Farm upgrades and better operational efficiencies have helped boost production. Overall production volume for vegetables was down by about 3% in 2024, despite increasing their yield by nearly 2%. It was not enough to boost the overall volume. Now, these farms now supply 3% of the country's vegetable needs. Seafood production volume also dipped by 14%. SFA says this is partly due to the restructuring of several local fish farms. Local seafood makes up over 6% of total seafood consumption. There are now 72 sea-based farms operating in Singapore waters. And that's about a quarter, less than the 98 in 2023. Over 90% of Singapore's food is imported. More countries were accredited to diversify the country's food sources. And these include pork, imported from Portugal, beef from Brunei and Poland, and turkey for poultry. The SFA conducts regular inspections to maintain food safety. Using data and tech, such inspections were reduced since 2022. The agency says it was also able to detect more cases of non-compliance and take enforcement action. One of the major milestones this year is actually we introduced the Food Safety and Security Bill in January this year, which has actually have higher penalties for a wider range of offences. This will provide more assurance for consumers. In fact, food security and food safety are two sides of the same coin, and we will continue to push on food safety front. Some local vegetable farms are struggling to stay in retail amid weaker demand for its produce. They are also facing higher operational costs, and this has forced some farms to pivot and explore other revenue streams. Rachel Tang reports. Vertical farm V Plus Agritech found ways to up its productivity. That's about eight times more than a traditional farm. While its innovation has taken off, its retail business is still at ground zero. It couldn't fork out the high transportation cost to deliver its produce for a major e-commerce player. This forced the firm to pivot away from retail completely. Now, it holds educational workshops and helps manage other farms for revenue. Material costs and then, you know, manpower costs is rising. Uh, people are still trying to get the lowest cost possible. In terms of the price point uh, for vegetables, um, generally speaking, uh, we have to compete with the uh, overseas imports in order to be competitive. As a recipient of a Singapore Food Agency grant, the firm needs to produce and sell vegetables at a certain volume to justify the grant. It's working with the Singapore Agro-Food Enterprises Federation to develop more niche crops and open up more sales channels. The Singapore Food Agency has found that the overall production volume of our vegetable farms have dipped by about 3%, bringing Singapore further away from its goal to produce 30% of its nutritional needs locally by 2030. SFA says it will continue to review its funds and programs to better address farms' evolving needs and encourage more businesses to support local offtake. It says this year and the next will see the ramp up of a few large scale indoor vertical farms. Local farms have witnessed a drop in demand. They say consumers are very sensitive to prices, especially amid a high inflation environment. But these farms have maintained their produce prices. At another farm, its sales volume dropped 20% in the first quarter of this year, compared to the same time last year. Edible Garden City says another issue they face is short lease terms. After we have improved the soil, uh, then we may potentially have to move to another site. Uh, so this can be quite disruptive in, in how, we, uh, how we operate the urban farm. 
Uh, but we're still finding uh, new ideas and new approaches around um, how we can scale out our outdoor farming methodologies. Edible Garden City says it's exploring alternative farming spaces such as streetscapes and public parks. And for more analysis, we're joined by Professor William Chen, Director of the Singapore Agri-Food Innovation Lab. He is also Director of the Food Science and Technology Program at NTU. Professor Chen, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me here. So a lot of questions around our food uh, supply and security. Uh, more countries are exporting food supplies to Singapore. Uh, can they help safeguard uh, Singapore against geopolitical and public health risks such as avian flu, given our high reliance on imports? Right. Uh, so if we look at the Singapore food security as a whole, we are basically talking about three pillars. Uh, one of the pillars is the local production. Second one is uh, diversifying the import sources. Mm -hmm. The third one is uh, grow overseas. So over the past 20 years or so, our import sources have increased from 140 countries to now maybe 187 countries. So this certainly will help us become more resilient uh, in terms of supply chain, uh, resilient to the disruption, potential disruption of the supply chain. Because, for example, in one of the overseas farms, if there's an avian flu detected, then we would just uh, shift to another uh, country, another um, a farm to import the, the chicken or, or beef. Okay, but you're talking about turning to another potential source, right? But what sort of contingency plans are in place if a major exporter faces a disruption? Well, if we have uh, 187 countries as our import sources, uh, I think the buffer is uh, pretty big. And uh, it's very unlikely that the one uh, infection disease outbreak wipe out the entire world uh, mm. uh, animal farm. Mm. But nevertheless, uh, I think SFA also has a very rigorous inspection scheme accreditation so that mm. they will check the source of uh, the, uh, the country source for the for the animal farm, uh, whether they fulfill the safety, biosafety, biosecurity requirement before they, they are allowed to even export their um, uh, meat to Singapore. What about alternative sources like lab-grown meat, um, insects shoring up our protein uh, supply? Has market interest or investment sort of slowed down recently? Well, there are many factors that uh, uh, resulted in what we are seeing now, mm -hmm. less enthusiasm towards these alternative uh, protein sources. But in my view, these are new options. Uh, we ought to double down to make these uh, sustainable in terms of uh, uh, consumer acceptance and mm -hmm. uh, uh, sustainable cost of production of these alternatives, especially for a city state of Singapore, we don't have a farm, animal farm. So these uh, urban solutions are essential for our, you know, give us a new option for our food security. Uh, if we look at the numbers, in 2024, 153 land-based farms, 72 sea-based farms achieved higher output per hectare. Um, is the future of farming skewed towards the fewer players that are able to produce higher output? And what might be the implications of that? Well, I tend to agree with you. If we look at the eggs production, for example, uh, we're talking about we only have three uh, farms producing eggs and yet we can achieve more than 30% of the uh, local needs, which means technology adoption for a uh, land scarce uh, country like Singapore mm. is a way to go. Mm. Uh, but we also need to bear in mind that uh, although we are seeing the, we are now seeing the, the drop in production for vegetable and uh, uh, seafood, mm. these are the this is some new practice, not just for Singapore, for the entire world. So it will take time for these practice to mature. So, and, and, and I would say that uh, if we look at the egg production, for example, if we can achieve this high, I hope that uh, once we have this mature technology and integrated for vegetable farming and seafood production, 
in in Singapore, then we will also be able to achieve uh, whatever we want to achieve. Yeah. How how can we support the smaller or emerging farms uh, better to so that so that it remains competitive? Well, I would say that uh, um, my sense is that uh, we need the small farmers need to work together. Mm. For example, we have this uh, organization called Safi mm -hmm. that is sort of a cooperative that help these uh, small scale farmers to you know uh, facilitate the tech uh, adoption mm. and uh, uh, share energy infrastructure or whatever. And so all these would uh, point towards a uh, reduced cost of operation and the easy adoption of technology. And in time to come, so when we work together, we become stronger. Sure. You know, we are five years away from uh, the Singapore's 30 by 30 goals, Prof. Uh, what do these stats tell you about Singapore's progress towards that goal? Do you think this is an indication that we will need to reassess those targets and goals? Well, I, 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 my sense is that we, we can be a little bit more patient. Uh, 30 by 30, the initiatives was started in 2019. And in between, from 2019, between 2019 and uh, now, 2025, we have three years of um, COVID-19 uh, outbreak that really disrupt a lot of this supply chain. And then after that, we have this uh, geopolitical tension, wars here and there. And uh, those uh, would uh, choke up these uh, energy costs. So all these uh, changes in the external environment uh, really didn't help us uh, move move the needle but uh, but when we look at the timeline effectively we're talking about two three years of effort towards mm -hmm. 30 by 30 so i'm very hopeful that uh, once we have this uh, maintained the higher productivity for vegetable and seafood farming and uh, with a uh, better technology adoption we'll be able to achieve uh, um, this uh, goal for singapore's food security all right, Professor Chen, thank you so much for coming in to thank speak with us tonight. Uh, that was Professor William Chen, Director of the Singapore Agri-Food Innovation Lab and Food Science and Technology Program at NTU.